The moment the enemy senses power, that's when the battle begins. My ex-boyfriend, he's just got a bad temper. He's just really, really mad, that's all. Jerry, I'm back! And I'm not leaving here without you. Pastor Lynn, you better not ever tell anyone about this. Smile. Let me give you a picture of this. Well, joke time's over. Yep. Then who or what is he? Or pimp. My concern is a whole lot of those folk are depending more on government than they're depending on God. And our father had to identify the body. And that's something no father should ever have to endure. I think what she's saying in scripture. Mabel, what you're saying in scripture. What that in scripture? I'm not even real sure it's anatomically possible. We've had extensive experience in the church world, and uh, we would love to use that experience to help you grow. And listen, it's all about the mighty dollar with them. They use their money to try to get positions in the church. Lynn, realistically, Terry cannot continue to stay here. She needs more supervision than you can give. I know that. As I said before, I can't just toss her out in the streets. I can't do that. Question. Jeepers, you and your questions. Do you know whether or not she actually wants help? I mean, really, really wants help. Really, really wants help? No, I guess I don't really. No. And we do need an answer to that, don't we? Quickly. Mm. All right, I can see the wheels turning. What's going on in that little brain of yours? Well, thank you very much for referring to my brain as little. But what's going on in there is the thought that, Maddie, we absolutely cannot allow this thing to become a well-intentioned, church sloppy agape thing. Knowledge of the sex trade is something they have not yet put in my pastoral manual. I mean, it's not listed under what do you do to take a hot meal to somebody who's homebound. No, this thing can mean life or death to anybody that's involved. Anybody. We're going to need a great, great deal of wisdom from the Holy Spirit always but also, frankly, from those mere mortals who deal with this on a regular basis. We're going to need their help. Why don't you call Mabel Green? A director of social services should certainly know how to give us some guidance. Ooh, that's a good thought. Besides, I'd say she owes you a favor or two. <laughs> that's another good thought. <laughs> Here we go. Wait a minute. I don't want to talk to her. How about you? What's she saying? Nothing? I really don't want to talk to him. Hello, this is Pastor Lynn Jenkins. Perchance, is Mabel Green available? Now play nice. A lot's on the line. Mabel! Oh, girl, this your buddy Lynn Jenkins. How you doing today? That, I don't think what she's saying is scripture. Mabel, what you're <laughs> saying in scripture? What that in scripture? I'm not even real sure it's anatomically possible. All righty then, Mabel, payback time, girl. This is our situation. You know that girl that came to the church the other day? Well, we just found out she was a part of the sex trade, and we need your help.
Are you going to sit there all day and mope just because no pastors have come forward? I can't believe it. Not a single one. Not one. I mean, it's not exactly like I expected a massive turnout, but I certainly anticipated that the Lord would provide whoever we needed. Not one. Well, aren't you the one who always says that 95% of churches aren't even interested in anything outside of their four walls? Yes, but where's the other 5%? Two questions. Now, don't start sounding like Maddie. Two questions. <laughs> First one, which is settle for 1%. Second, is thinking outside the box the same as thinking outside the four walls? What in the world are you talking about? There's someone here to see you. And he's not from the Hall's reunion. As a matter of fact, I think he might be able to help. Well, bring him on in. May I introduce Rand Waller? Welcome, Pastor Rand Waller. Gina? Yes? Call Deacon Hall for me, please. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. You're getting ready to start something, aren't you? Oh, yeah. Mr. Waller, I'm Lynn Jenkins. You can call me Rand. Great. Call me Lynn. Please have a seat. Sure. Thank you. Now, Rand, if we don't deal with the elephants in this room, I'm never going to be able to pay attention to a single thing you say to me. What elephants? Uh, the ones stuck in your ears. These things? I, th those puppies, yes. That's awesome. I love it when that happens. I'll bet it happens often. Well, it does. So, I grew up in a traditional church. Uh -huh. I felt the call of God on my life. I went away to a traditional seminary. I learned how to preach, came back to my church. I preached the sermons they wanted me to preach. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, I can tell you one thing. If they told me what to preach, I'd have been out of there. So what happened with you? Well, um, I love the people in my church. Yeah. They're like family to me. I'll bet they are. But the youth? Running out the back door as fast as they could. You nailed it. So what happened then? <laughs> it's hard to say this, but the Holy Spirit didn't even have room to work. Mm. There were so many traditions there's no room left for him. <laughs> so, point being, what good is it to have the traditions of men that make the adults happy and we lose God's next generation just because the Holy Spirit isn't allowed in? You nailed it again. <laughs> so, what'd you do? <laughs> I decided to ditch the suit and the tie. Yeah? And I went down to Walmart and I got my ears pierced. I know, kind of crazy. And then I went and bought some skinnies and there you be. There I am. <laughs> so what was the effect on the church? Well, honestly, Lynn, half of them are threatening to leave. Uh-huh. My thought? That's probably a good thing. Hmm? My second thought? I'll bet the youth will start coming back. We've seen that happen. Some of the youth are coming back, and we're excited because I really think more are going to come. That is awesome. I mean, that'll flat get me excited. All right. I may have to rethink the earring thing, you know what I mean? Doesn't mean I'm not going to have a lot of fun when old Deacon Hall gets here, mind you, but I guess I'm coming to have a new appreciation for him. But I have to ask, out of curiosity, mm -hmm. the, the half that's left, mm -hmm. where those folks stand? It's really awesome, Lynn. They're so excited about what God's doing in the church. They want to serve in the community. They want to be the church outside the four walls, and they want to focus on the youth. Now, that's my kind of thinking. Oh, thanks, Gina. You're welcome. Thank You're you. You're the best. You're welcome. Well, excuse me for overhearing or eavesdropping. <laughs> 
but why don't you bring the other half over here? We have a project that we're working on and we could really use the help. Well, that's what I heard. That's, that's why I'm here. Go ahead, you won't bother me. As a matter of fact, I do have a proposal. Well, I'm listening. And evidently, so are other people. <laughs> really nosy people. Well, just up the road, a traditional church is looking to start a church plant. <laughs> Sorry. You and the earrings thinking about joining them? Well, I did give it some thought. But I think a better solution would be to encourage our traditional folks to go up and join them. So you mean don't let the doorknob hit them with a Gina. good... Gina! <laughs> you nailed it! I cannot get good help around here. I cannot get good help! Seriously, though, why not encourage them to go and worship in a place where they're going to feel welcome? And then the rest of us will stay and we will work in the community. We'll be the church outside the four walls and we can help with the project you want to do. Wow. Here comes Deacon Hall. Heads up, this Deacon, he's wound a little tight. Around here we say he's a work in progress. Slow, slow progress. Good morning, Gina. Good morning. Well, I see we have company here today. Deacon Hall. May I introduce Rand Waller? How are you, Brother Waller? Nice to meet you. Hi, oh, it's good to meet you. Wait for it. Wait for what? Wait for it. What? It's coming. What's coming? It's coming. Pastor Rand Waller. Oh, no. No, no. All right, I've reached my limit. Nope. Mm -mm. Wait, 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 wait. Come back here and fight like a man. <sighs> Seriously. Deacon Hall, before you pull the pin completely out of your grenade, you need to take a look at the final estimate for the repairs on this church. You know, first you, then a clown, now pastor earrings. Happy days, happy days. $175,000 for repairs? Where are we supposed to get this from? What are you looking at me for? You want my humble opinion? The old gal's beyond repair. What we need is a miracle. Well, we could be your miracle. I think we have a solution. Well, I'm certainly listening. We'd like to help build Jeremiah's house. Bam, there's your 1%. <laughs> oh, Father, thank you and forgive this old gal from all her grumbling but I don't think it stops there. You see, if we help build Jeremiah's house, we're gonna lose half of our congregation. All the traditionalists are gonna leave. That means that we'll be left with a half empty building with extra resources, and we could share those resources. It could be a win-win. Well, certainly seems promising to me. Deacon Hall? You think this is something you'd be willing to bring up to the board? Well, if it'll keep us from having to pay $175,000 worth of repairs, I don't think we've got a choice. Well, there's our salute. Oops. What? What now? Mm, 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 mm. What? <clears throat> Does this mean Deacon Hall's going to have to get his ears pierced? <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> That's not he, funny. <laughs> that, that's not funny. He's melting. He's melting. <laughs> that's not funny. That's not funny. No. Mm -mm. It's not. No. <laughs> Calm down, honey. Remember your blood pressure. Earrings. A pastor with two earrings and one ear. No. Don't be so old school. 
earrings or not. I see it as answered prayer. Unless you have $175,000 tucked away that I don't know about. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> Think of it this way. Someone else to help us build Jeremiah's house. You should be excited about it. Earrings. Just when I'm getting used to a white pastor and a clown. Then here comes earrings. Poor baby. You look nice with a diamond stud in your ear too, you little stud muffin. Come on, please. <laughs> So, are you going to put any money towards Jeremiah's house? I am. I've decided we're going to take some money out of the savings and put it toward the first house. And that'll be my part. Well, since it's our savings, I hope you put more than a dollar in, like that dollar you put in the hat for Pastor's Poodle. Dad, I think there's something else we can do to get this off the ground. What's that, Elena? And how much is it going to cost me? Mm. Uh, I think that Terry should come and stay with us. Girl, are you crazy? Yes, honey. Considering that girl's past, we can't trust her. And I'm not interested in being knifed in the back in the middle of the night either. Me neither. Mom and Dad, please hear me out. You all don't know this, but I was approached by someone a couple of years ago. And I'm pretty sure it was a trap for something really dark. What? I didn't really see the need to tell you at the time. I'd pretty much forgotten about it until Terry. And since then, I can't stop thinking. You know that could have been me. Jesus. Honey, we're going to talk about that later. But we cannot just bring someone like that into our home. But she stayed with Pastor Lynn for like two weeks and there were no problems. Yeah, and that's where she needs to stay. Mm -hmm. Dad. No, 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 Elena. This is too much for me. I'm out. Honey, your dad is still trying to process earrings. Huh? Never mind. Elena. We Mom, I didn't go to church because I didn't see the church doing any good. Oh, they preached, passed around the offering plate, and had a whole lot of potluck dinner. Come on now. Sorry. Look, I will do everything I know to do. I'll have Officer Lansky do a background check. I'll get the pastor to contact the social services and they can get in touch with me and tell me what to do. Oh, sweetheart. Mom, I don't want to go to church. I want to be the church. John fifteen thirteen, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. But Lord, she's not even my friend. I don't even know her. But then again, I guess you laid your life down for me well before I knew you. Just don't know if I have the strength to do it, Lord. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. How I love that old cross, where the dearest and best for a world of loss Sinners was slain. Laddie, it was for a world of lost sinners that the Lord laid down his life. Who will you lay down your life for? Pastor Mabel Green called while you were on the phone. Am I supposed to call her back? No, she was actually headed to a staff meeting and said it would probably last the rest of the day. Okay, I'll catch up with her. Thanks. Oh, but she did leave a message. <laughs> good news or bad news? Well, good, and I think you just might like it. Great, let me have it. 
Well, she did the background check on Terry, mm -hmm. and it came back with nothing criminal. Well, that's not a biggie. We already knew that from Officer Lansky. Anything else? Yes, because of that, she found placement for her. They'll take her for 30 days. Ooh, there <laughs> is a God, and he loved me. He loved me. Man, that's good. Wait a minute. What's supposed to happen after 30 days? Oh, hi. Hey, Gina. How are you all? Hey, Good. Gina. Hi. Come on in. Hey, y'all. Would, would, would you give us just a second? We have got to figure out the arrangements for Terry. Good. Terry is the reason why we're here. Well, talk to me. It seems... We would like to have Terry in our house. What? Yes, the Lord and Lamar had a little talk. And it's his decision. He's committed to it, right, honey? Absolutely. Wait a minute, I, I gotta somehow get my brain wrapped around this thing. L let me think it through. Her record's clean. I haven't had a lick of trouble with her. Minus trying to get her to have some kind of self-worth. But Mrs. Green just found her a place. For 30 days, you and I were just talking. What's gonna to happen to her after that? Mary, are you both absolutely sure? It was Elena's idea at first. Both of us were adamantly against it. But you know, Mr. No, no, no. Well, after the Lord and Lamar had that little talk, we both talked about it and we won't have it any other way. And we both agree that we want her to come live with us. Absolutely. Mm. Well, I've told you a number of times that I have no interest in being involved in anything foolish. Really? With serious things. Other things? Uh, but I'll tell you this. I have learned through the years of ministry that when God has a plan, the best thing I can do is just get out of the way. And I'm beginning to wonder whether or not he's laying a foundation for Jeremiah's house mm -hmm. that I hadn't expected. So does that mean yes? How about this? We'll let Terry go to the facility that Mabel suggested. Let's see if she completes the program. I mean, that ought to tell us whether or not she's interested in truly being helped. Then, and only then, Perhaps we can let her come to your house for a trial period if Mabel approves. Oh, give me a break. You don't think she'll approve it? That just means that she'll be able to check her off the roster. Ordinarily, you and I'd be moving on down the same road, but I've known the girl long enough to know that she would sincerely want nothing but the best for Terry. Lamar, I'm sorry, but I have got to ask you one more time because this is going to take strength, determination, and a whole lot of love and sacrifice. So are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. 